Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am joined by Tay Daniels, and we are talking all things group coaching and mom life and business and just all of the things. I am so excited for this conversation today. And with that being said, Tay, welcome in to the podcast. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. This episode's going to be so good. I know. I'm so excited to speak with you because like I see you everywhere and just excited to learn more about you and dive in. So before we do that, though, tell us more about yourself, who you are, what you do and who you serve. Absolutely. So a little bit about me is I am a certified life and business coach, but I started my first business journey in 2016 as a virtual assistant. I was seven months pregnant. You know the story. Didn't want to go back to my nine to five. And I was like, I will do anything to just be at home with the babies. And so I quit my job with no experience, no clients, $100 to my name. And I was like, let's see where this takes me. (laughs) In 2018, I grew into an agency and then 2019 into coaching. And this is this crazy journey has just led me down this path of coaching and then into life coaching, which has been the most beautiful experience, but I help coaches, specifically life and lifestyle typed coaches, um, some service provider coaches, mostly life and lifestyle coaches, build, grow, and scale their group coaching programs. So from starting your group program to scaling past six figures, that is what we do. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love how you shared that you quit your job when you were seven months pregnant. Like, holy moly, and look at you now. Insane. It is, but it just shows that like, you know, borrow that belief from Tay that like, okay, she did it. So can you, you know, I quit my job without a business degree. I come from a career in healthcare and I've grown this business. So we are the proof that you don't have to have all of these fancy like certifications and extra things. Like you got to put in the work. So how did you go? Right, exactly. Everybody thinks like you'll just wake up one day a millionaire. It doesn't happen that way. I'm sorry if you're thinking I wish. That, I know. That'd be cool. Like if you figured it out, if anyone listening has figured it out, please DM us. Like we would both love to know like right? what that secret sauce is. But like, Tay, I would love to know, like when you are at this point in your life, you're seven months pregnant, you quit your job. Like where did you start? How did you get from point A to where you are now? Oh my gosh. That's such a good question. And honestly, I'll go back to the beginning. I was 23, right? I was young, delusional, (laughs) and kind of carefree. And so that honestly has played such a big role in my success is just being like, I don't know, we're going to figure this out kind of mentality versus trying to plan every single thing, which yes, was very reckless, but also paid out. Thank goodness. (laughs) Um, But Through my journey, I was not afraid to take risks. I was not afraid to fail. I was not afraid to look stupid or to make a mistake, which I think really, really played that big role in success because I think for a lot of people, it's, oh my gosh, if I quit, then what's going to happen? And in all honesty, you don't know. Like You could plan every single thing and it's never going to go to plan anyway, so you might as well just do it. And so that level of delusion and just like, I'm a big risk taker is kind of how I got to where I is today and just like not afraid to try new things, not afraid to, again, not afraid to fail because I was like, I don't know, I'm just going to learn from this experience. And so that was really what, what got me here. But then the strategy piece was definitely investing, hiring a coach because I spent a lot of my earlier years just spinning in my, spinning my wheels, really feeling stuck, kind of not breaking past those five key months. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to bite the bullet, hire a coach, which was actually my first group coaching program. It was $10,000. It was insane. My husband sold his car for me to invest because I wasn't making that kind of money. And eight months later, I hit my first six-figure year and went on to make multi-six figures from that. And I was like, 
group coaching has changed my life, not only from being a client, but then I launched my first group co coaching program and it made six figures. And then that program today is like one of our most elite programs that we have. Oh my gosh. That is absolutely incredible. <laughs> I love how you said too, like I was delusional and honestly, oh, sure. like, that was probably a huge strength at the time because for me, I didn't start my business until I was a little bit older. And so I had mm -hmm. like all these like self-imposed, like what ifs and those fears held me back, but yep. you had that figure it out mentality. And that's what it comes down to at the end of the mm -hmm. day, everything is figure outable. Marie Forleo wrote a oh, fabulous sure. book by the same title. And it, <laughs> it's true though. We build up these like yeah. roadblocks in our minds and we hold ourselves back because we're afraid. We're afraid to fail. We're afraid yep. of judgment. We're afraid of all of these things. But for me, like when I started questioning mm -hmm. those things, like, okay, so what if I fail? I'll find a different way to make money. I'll learn that this wasn't oh, necessarily sure. like the right path for me. And that's okay. Like, I feel like once you get to that point where you're not afraid of failure and you kind of like embrace it and use it to learn, like, doesn't life get yep. easier? It has for me. Oh, for sure. Which this is exactly why I became a certified life coach. Because I was like through business for myself and others, life coaching, mindset coaching always comes up at every block. And I was like, if, if you can remove this, you're going to be so much more successful in your business. And so that was what led me into life coaching. But yeah, with failing, for me, it's like if I can fail quicker – then I'm going to have more answers because I'm going to know what doesn't work. So failing quicker is actually the key to success. And people are so afraid to fail. And I'm like, no, just be better at failing. Do it right. more. Right, <laughs> exactly. And it's crazy because, you know, as kids, we have to fail. We have to fail yeah. in order to learn how to walk and run and play sports. We're not just, you know, popping out one day running. No, like there's a process right? to it and it takes time. You have to fail yeah. to move forward. So I love that you're exactly. embracing that. And I think that's something we're all working on and we need to really not fear. Like, okay, so what? Yeah. It's, it's not the end of the world. And I don't know, for <laughs> you, like, has my you love mindset too and for me mindset mm -hmm. i honestly think is like 80 percent, if not more of business success oh, for because sure. it's like even when you are then achieving those successes new level new devil right so what yep. have you had to then work through as you've like okay so you go from your husband selling his car and you have a hundred dollars to mm -hmm. your name to okay you hit your first six figure year and, you know, it mm -hmm. continues to build. I mean, it's not to say that, okay, I've reached this point. That's it. That's the limit. I've made it. Now I can just sit yes. back and eat bonbons all day. That's I not wish. the reality, right? Yes. This is a great question. And I tell every single person I know this, that if you don't work on your problems now at making $10,000, $100, you know, $20,000, they're not going to go away at 100000 And I used to believe my problems are just going to go away when I'm a six-figure business owner. That was the level of delusion I was at, but <laughs> they didn't. And if you don't work on your mindset, especially your money mindset, your sales mindset, it will just resurface at every level and maybe in a different way, but it's going to keep coming up until you fix it. And so I actually grew up poor and I lived in a trailer with my single mom. And so I know what it's like to hustle and be savvy. My mom worked three jobs. And um, I think that also played a, a role in kind of like a blessing and a curse of I know how to survive on nothing, right? But at the same time, so much trauma around money and the way I think about money and spend money, like I wrecked my credit at 18, which was if I could go back in time and tell my younger self like d to learn about money and credit and all the things that you don't learn in school and likely not from your family if you don't come from wealth – so that I could do that for my children. Like that was one of my biggest things was like learning how to love money, interact with money, uh, be secure with money, save money, but also spend, like having that healthy level of saving and spending. Um, and so that's really where for me, it's helping women see that you have to fix those deep rooted beliefs that you have with money 
mistakes. They are going to come up all the time in your business. They're going to come up when you sell. They're going to come up when you spend or don't spend or whatever that looks like for you. And so like that's one, been one of the biggest pieces is constantly working on my own self-awareness with everything. And when you're a business owner, you cannot avoid self-awareness. It'll just like smack you in the face. <laughs> yes. I wasn't ready for that when I became a business owner. No. I'm like, oh, whoa, what's happening here? Like, like you said, all of oh, these yeah. like deep rooted beliefs that we have, it, it, it was kind of wild at first going into yeah. things like money mindset, because we don't realize like what a role our environment that we were brought up in has upon our, our decisions. And if you don't address yeah. those subconscious beliefs, it can really, really get to you and hold you back. But oh, for sure, for me, it involved like really shifting my mindset to, okay, money's a tool. Money's just a tool. Oh, yeah. And the more money yeah. I make, it's not a bad thing. It's just a tool that I can use to make more impact. And something else that yep. you said that I think holds a lot of women back is investing in ourselves. It's making mm -hmm. the scary investments that are going to stretch us way beyond our comfort zone. Dropping the yep. 10K on a program, hiring a coach, investing in yourself before you're ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. This, I actually just coached my students on this yesterday because so many of our women are moms. And I know the people listening to this podcast yeah. are also mothers, but mothers love to shame and guilt themselves on spending, especially if it's spending on yourself. And I always want to remind my women and my mothers that as a wife and a mom and a business owner, 99% of the time, I always see women wanting to make more money for their children, for yep. their family, for somebody other than them. And I'm like, the most selfless thing you can do is to spend more, to make more, to take care of the people you love. Because every woman I know wants to just take care of other people. She doesn't want to be a selfish person. But by not spending and not investing and not stretching yourself to make more, you're actually being selfish, right? And and women don't think of it that way. They think like, well, the kids need this and the kids need that. What the kids need is a happy, healthy mother, but also you making an impact on yourself, right? And so I think it's just like shifting those thoughts and that truly like my daughter seeing me work, seeing me like be the breadwinner of our home, seeing me like be so dedicated to what I do, but also she gets to be homeschooled. We get to go on vacations. She gets to live a completely different life than I ever lived because of the business I've built. And I think that if women could see it from that perspective, it would be a no brainer to invest. And so, yeah, that first $10,000 investment, my husband really had to push me into because I was like, I don't know about this. And I was like sick to my stomach, but I was yeah. like, I'm going to show up to every single call. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to like truly put myself into every single thing that this coach offers because at the end of the day, it's on me to get these results. And after that, then I went on to be certified. I spent $21,000 on a certification and that was like, okay, like this is so worth it to me, right? Like I got there, it took time. I didn't just have $21,000 sitting to just blow at that time either. And I think women think, well, once I get to a certain level or I make enough money or I get more clients, then I'll spend. But if you already knew how to make more money and get more clients, you wouldn't need to invest. So the investment always has to come first. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I love that perspective. You know, for me, I, I love looking at it from the lens of we're not afraid to drop over six figures on our college education. All right, so if I decided today I wanted to go back to school and become a CPA, I'd have to go back, I'd have to take courses, I'd have to invest a lot of money in higher education. It's the same thing with our businesses. We're learning skill exactly. sets that we mm -hmm. are lacking. We literally have yeah. people out there that can collapse time for us and teach us exactly what we need right now at a fraction of the cost yes. of an education that's really not going to teach us the on the job skills that we need. I can't tell you how many friends I have yes. that have these business degrees and they're like, I mean, it, it really didn't teach me much in terms of what I'm doing because the, the landscape of business is yes. constantly changing. It's constantly evolving. Exactly. And it's doing the inner work. It's really, really For becoming sure. so self-aware of where we're holding back. And yep. I don't know, for me, I don't know if it was the same way for you, but when I invest big, 
I have skin in the game. Like I am going to show up yes. and do the work because you know what? Like I've got little humans to feed. I've got a husband. Yep. I've got, you know, I've got that drive and motivation. Like I'm going to invest this amount of money. I want to get results. And I think that it's very easy yes. to get trapped into, okay, well, I spent the $10,000 and nothing's happening. But are you actually yes. implementing what you doing the learn? work? Right. Again, it's like you yep. sign up for the college courses, you never show up and you fail the course and you're like, yeah, well, what, what well the happened? professor, that's the, right. <laughs> yeah. right. Exactly. We're yeah. blaming everybody else, but it really investing yes. in yourself in this way is so important because now you have skin in the game. Like you're going to go all yes. in. I'm interrupting this episode to share an incredible networking opportunity that happens every single Monday at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Join us for Coffee Talk and meet and collaborate with other mompreneurs just like you. Networking has grown my business by leaps and bounds, and I would love to share this opportunity with you. All the details can be found in our show notes. Now back to the show. Absolutely. And two, I think that women get confused on investing in information versus yes. a transformation. And I, yes. this is a firm thing I will always believe is that courses, low ticket offers, memberships, those are information and they're great. Don't get me wrong. You need information, but at some level you need to take action, you need to implement and you need a transformation. And that comes from hands-on coaching, being in the room, doing the thing and information will never get you there. And so you have to really take a deep look in the, in the mirror and say, Hey, you know what? I've done the freebies. I've done the courses, the memberships, the low ticket offers. I've gotten the information. My problem is that I'm not being consistent. I'm not holding myself accountable. I'm not doing the work. I need to get in with a coach or a mentor who's going to push me to do the thing. And I actually need to hold myself accountable for doing the thing. And if you can do that, you will be successful, whether that's a year from now, five years from now, if you keep pushing in taking messy action in our program, we call it quick and dirty, which is you stop spinning in the drama, you stop overthinking every decision and you just decide and you do it. And then you learn from that data and you do it again and again and again consistently. That's our yeah. quick and dirty method. Everyone thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> it um, is hilarious. But that is truly what changes the game. Right. Well, we tend to be overthinkers. We want everything to be perfect. Yes. We want all of the information before we start implementing. No, you've got to take action. You know enough. You need to start implementing what you yep. know now. And mm -hmm. I think that that's where most people quit is they have all of this information. Yep. They have all of these ideas and then they're overwhelmed. They don't know where to start start with one thing, pick one. It doesn't matter what that one thing is, but you have to move. You can't just be a mm -hmm. consumer. We're living nope. in an era where literally anything out there you ever need to know, there's a YouTube video, there's Google, there's the information yep. is there. But where people are yeah. holding back is the implementation. We don't implement yes. what we know. Yeah. And implementing when when I tell my students is implement for 90 days with no change, then decide to change the strategy. But that doesn't mean quit. It means collect your data and then decide what works, what didn't work. And then where do we navigate from here every single 90 days? And if you can do this for one to five years, you will see progress. You will see success. But like you said, everyone gives up at this, at this turning point. And for me, it's coaching my students on making decisions quickly loving the decision you made because literally there's no such thing as a right decision. It's just the decision that you chose to be right and you love it because they're both going to have, both decisions are going to have bumps in the road. You're going to not like a decision at some point. So just learn to love the decision and move forward and take quicker action because the worst thing that's going to happen is you don't take action. Nothing happens. You make no money. You have no results. If you take quick action, the worst thing that's going to happen is you have answers and you know what to do from here. And so I think for a lot of people, it's just that that mindset of like, oh, I just need to do more. And I don't think they are, I think they allow that fear, right? That fear to hold them back. But you should be more fearful of being where you're at today, a year from now. That's scary. Oh my gosh, 100%. And I love that you chunk it down into those 90 day, almost like quarterly reviews, because what happens is yep. we, we launch one thing and nobody buys. So what do we do? We revamp the whole thing and then we try it again yeah. and nobody buys. And then we revamp the whole thing. Okay. Number one, it's exhausting. Number two, you're constantly pivoting. So of course, nothing's going to work. You have to give it time. And I love that 90 day perspective yes. because yes, 
stick with the mm-hmm. one thing, make one or two minor little tweaks, identify those gaps yeah. and use the data at hand. I feel like we're constantly pivoting because we're thinking, oh gosh, this just doesn't work. And we go into like mm-hmm. freeze mode. And then we yes. go into that scarcity mindset and it just, it's exhausting. It's absolutely yeah. exhausting. And I want to say too, if if you launch something and it doesn't quote unquote work, it is not your price. So leave your price alone. And if you think it's your price, that means you don't believe in your price, then why are you selling it at that price? And I would beg to differ then you need to sell in a price that you 100% wholly believe in so that you can sell effectively, but it's not the price that's the actual problem. It's the way that you think about the offer. That's number one. It's the way that you show up for the offer. It's the way that you sell the offer. But a lot of times people are like, oh my gosh, it's the offer. It's the price. No, it isn't. A buyer cycle is three to nine months. So if you haven't built a hot audience of buyers for this particular offer for three to nine consistent months of selling, you actually don't know what it is. It's usually a lead problem. It's usually a value content problem or a conversation problem. It's almost never an offer problem. Messaging, possibly, because the way you're talking about the offer, because you probably don't believe in it. That Yes, that comes up, but it's almost never the actual offer and it's almost never the actual price. <laughs> right, exactly. It all, again, goes back to money mindset, right? Because if yep. you don't believe in what you're bringing to the table, how are you going mm-hmm. to get people to buy into the t- amazing transformation that you provide? Now, I want to shift yeah. gears here just a little bit and touch upon group pro- coaching programs. So what are mm-hmm. the advantages to group coaching programs? Why do you love group coaching versus say one-on-one coaching or memberships or all of the other things that we see out there? Yeah, so for me, the the reason I truly, truly love group coaching is because you get more access to more resources. So you have a community that is there to support you. They're in the exact same shoes as you. They've been there. So when you're in this community, you have a bunch of women going through the same things or similar things. So many more hands on deck. So you have, let's say 10 women in the group. That's 10 women's eyes on whatever you're doing. And likely someone's either been there, done that, or know someone who's been there and done that. So you've just widened your like information just right there. But also For our group specifically, I make sure that every single woman is a good fit for the group because our women are like 30 to 50 years old. We're mothers. We're we're not doing drama. We're not doing caddy. We're not doing any of that kind of stuff. You will be removed from my group so fast. We are there to truly support each other. And we have the most hands-on group coaching programs in the industry because of the community. Like it's truly the women and how supportive that they are of one another. But also we pride ourselves in being extremely diverse. So Women of all colors, sizes, shapes from all over the world, different countries coming together to learn in one room is so powerful. And for us too, it's, yes, we're doing business coaching, but we're going so much deeper. We're doing life coaching. We're talking about motherhood. We're talking about all those blocks that are holding you back from being successful in your business. So you're getting more access to coaching from me because we're together all the time in a group versus one-to-one. It's just you and me, you know, maybe back and forth in Slack. And not that there's anything wrong with one-to-one, but you're just not going to get the same effects as group because of the diversity of, of the program. Yeah. So more information, more coaching, the hands-on community, like it to me, it just feels like having business besties and people who get it in your life because your friends and family likely don't in your pocket, in your Slack channel all day, every day. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? When your friends and family don't get it, surrounding yourself with others that are going through what you're going through, that is so key to succeeding in business. I mean, I know even for myself, my mom, she still is like, I don't understand what you do. I don't understand how you're making any money. Are you sure you're okay? And it's like, I've gotten to the point now, I don't have to like justify myself to her because I have people around me that get it, that stretch me to dream bigger, that when I'm having a bad day, I can reach out to and be like, you know what? This is hard. This is really hard. And I can be open and vulnerable and not feel like I'm being judged because they've been there too. They get it. And they'll link arms with me and they're like, you know what? Like, we've got this. Like, no problem. Exactly. And 
Yeah. And not only that, like you have to stop asking for advice from people who have no idea because they've never been in your shoes and your friends and your family and your partner who have likely never built a business or online business or coaching business. They have no idea how to give you advice. Let's be honest. They don't. And the advice they give is going to come from like a loving, I love you. I want to take care of you. I want you to be safe place. And if you show any signs of like, this feels scary and unsafe, they're gonna be like, well, you know, don't do it or something unhelpful or unuseful versus someone who's truly walked that path who can give you solid advice because they've been there. So I always suggest just stop taking advice from them and just like allow them to love you from afar as a partner and not a coach. And so often we want to go to our partner and like ask for coaching advice and then they don't give it. And then we're frustrated. We're like, why aren't you helping me? And they're like, I have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. So that's why I really want to lean on your group. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. That makes so much sense. So if you are listening to this today and you're going, oh my gosh, this is totally me. Tay, how can we get into your world? How can we learn more about the amazing programs that you have created for entrepreneurs? Yeah. So you can always find me on Instagram. It's always me in the account. You can DM me. You can tell me where you found me. Tell me all about yourself at it's Tay Daniels underscore LLC. And then we have two programs that are always open. We have coach school, which is level one, build your first group coaching program in six months. Um, You'll have your offer built in 30 days and then we'll start selling and marketing it. And then we have a hundred K Academy. So once you've already built your group, now we're going to grow it to a hundred thousand dollars. I love it. Oh my gosh. Tay, so many incredible takeaways today. This was a fabulous, fabulous conversation. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for having me. So good. Yes. All right, mamas. Until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 